on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. So Ripple turns out looks like a pump and dump. Uh, Steam was a bit of a wild card yesterday, kind of a bit of a freak. It was going up while everything else was going down. Zero X was also going up while everything else was going down. And also blockchain.com are having a bit of a problem with another company that owns blockchain.io claiming that they're kind of squatting on their domain name. So we'll talk about all that today. So let's start with Ripple. Ripple is turning out to be a bit of a pump and dump by the looks of things. I decided to sell Ripple at about 55 cents. So if we look at the chart now, it's around 45 cents. This is that massive run up. We saw that there was like a, an announcement that the X Rapid product was going to be launched soon. And I think that's what led to the pump. But you'll see it's giving back most of its gains right now. We'll see if it holds on to any of them at all. It's still way above where it was. Um, but it's a lot further down from where it was as well. So it's right in the middle of the range of where it hit top to bottom. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, very tempting to sell off when something pumps like that. I also mentioned Steam. Steam is a, is a freak yesterday and today, being one of the few coins to avoid the current sell-off. So if I then show CoinMarketCap, for example, we'll see that there's um, we've returned back to $207 billion total market cap. And you see Ripple there having a nice 17% drop for the day. Red all the way down, except when you get to Steam, which is around the 34th, there it is. Yesterday, it was up around 18% on the day. Today is up about 6.6% .6 on the day amongst all the various um, red that we see in the markets. Now I say zero X was another freak. It was up quite a bit yesterday, but now it's given back some of those gains as well. But just talking about Steam though, there's, um, there's a hard fork upgrade coming to Steam today. So this is known as hard fork 20. Don't know if that's got anything to do with the price pump, but there is an official announcement on Steemit, strangely enough, from the Steemit blog, talking about an announcement, what's to expect from the hard fork, pre hard fork announcement, um, what's gonna happen over the next few days and what's gonna happen from the hard fork as a result. Now, it's known as hard fork 20, been planned for a while it's been anticipated for a while and it's been uh, eagerly anticipated for a while so this article gives a detailed breakdown of what to expect and you can dig into the details if you are interested one of the main benefits to this hard fork upgrade is that apps that are built on steam will now be able to offer free steam accounts to their users so they can do that at the same time preventing abuse so that's kind of been a bit of a problem in steam if you can't have an easy and almost unlimited onboarding of users, you can't really grow your platform. But at the same time, because it costs money, it's a transaction on the Steam network, it costs like three Steam to create an account, that's open to abuse because an account therefore has value. And anything that has value, someone could just create tons of them and then you know use the monetization that way. So not being able to effortlessly create accounts has no doubt held back the adoption of Steam and the apps ecosystem at large. So this upgrade should see apps like DTube, Steam Monsters, and all the other great apps that are built on Steam open up a huge new market of new adoption, and I'm very excited about that, given that I'm a big advocate of Steam. I own quite a bit of Steam myself, and uh, I've been waiting for this sort of thing for a long time. So there are another number of other fundamental changes to Steam, which um, may cause the Steam blockchain to act a little bit weird over the next sub seven days because, because there's some new algorithms with regards to resource allocation, stuff like this. It's going to take time for those new algorithms to reach an equilibrium, right? So it's just the way it is. So we just have to see, we just have to bear with the Steam blockchain for the next seven days while it kind of goes a little bit crazy and settles down. But if we can do with that turmoil long term, it's going to be a better network as a result. Another freak coin that I mentioned was 0x. Um, it was going up while everything else was going down. I can actually show the chart for that. If I just go over to trading view, I'll look at 0x against the US dollar. You see if I zoom in right in here, this doji candle turned into a spinning top in the end. It went right above its 50 day moving average. And unlike Steam though, it hasn't held up. It's come all the way back down again and given back, well, almost all of those gains from yesterday. So not great. Now this might have something to do with the release of the 0x version 2.0. And that was officially announced by the project themselves. So here's the project co-founder, Will Warren, 
announcing the launch of ZeroX protocol 2.0. I've been a big fan of ZeroX. I've held it for oh, a long time. I held it way before the massive bull run of 2017, held it all the way through, held it all the way through, through the bear market of 2018, and I'm still holding it, so I haven't touched it. So ZeroX, if you don't know, is an Ethereum-based protocol that is designed so that exchanges pretty much function exactly the same on the base layer. That then allows them to all to communicate with each other because they all share the same basic functions, right? That ultimately results in you being able to operate your own exchange built on the ZeroX protocol while allowing buyers on your exchange to be matched with selling orders on other exchanges uh, to create kind of a, a, a large pool of liquidity, right? So not only does that allow trading through a decentralized exchange because ZeroX is a smart contract system itself, it also creates a whole network of decentralized exchanges that not only work together, but they also compete. So the competition is more for user experience and features rather than trying to reinvent the wheel by constantly rebuilding the same you know, functionalities of an exchange, which is allowing you to place orders, buying and selling and matching and all that sort of stuff. It's the same thing that basic functionality that all exchanges need. So ZeroX was like, why do we keep doing this? Reinventing the wheel, right? Let's just provide that toolkit so that that's done. And you can just take the ZeroX protocol, takes care of all those basic functions. And then all that development time, resource and money can be spent adding value, which is user experience, features and security and all the other stuff. So now we're in version two of ZeroX and it's been working. You know, there are a number of decentralized exchanges built on ZeroX already, already like Radar Relay and whole bunch of others that you can use right now via your MetaMask. So like we saw on the chart there, while ZeroX did spike in price, it has come all the way down again to uh, the lows of the previous day. So not great there. And speaking of decentralized applications, today's sponsor is EOS Bet Dice. So EOS Bet Dice is the most popular blockchain app ever in terms of number of transactions. It has had 2.6 million transactions in the last seven days alone. And EOS Bet Dice lets you play to win EOS tokens just by rolling the dice and betting on the outcome, right? And it does that with full transparency and instant payouts to your wallet. So there's no even custodial risk. You just place the bet, roll the dice, and you either win or lose. And if you win, the money gets deposited straight into your account with an EOS transaction. So if you play a few games using the referral link below, you'll also help out the show by providing some uh, referral commissions there. So just remember with this type of thing, because it's gambling, when the fun stops, stop playing. That's the only thing that I'd ask. And if you hate ads and sponsors and you want to remove them, you now can by going to our Patreon page, signing up as a patron, and you can get an episode of the Cryptoverse with no ads, no sponsor spots, none of that sort of stuff. So final story for today then, comes from Coindesk. This is the blockchain.info slash blockchain.com story. So let's go over to that right now. I find this one particularly interesting. Let's start at the top here. So it says wallet provider blockchain sues crypto startup days before their ICO. So that's not blockchain.com doing an ICO. So blockchain.com is one of the world's widely used wallets. It supports Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ethereum. Now blockchain.com, which we normally just call it blockchain, they used to trade as blockchain.info, and they are suing a startup that's just about to conduct an ICO. And this organization is called Paymium. Okay. The beef is that this ICO is using a domain name that they own, blockchain.io. And they're using blockchain.io to host a token sale, which blockchain.com say is an attempt to use their brand name to gain investor trust when the project has nothing to do with them. Are you following me so far? Very complicated. So here's the court document, which you can access if you want to read it. This is blockchain.io, which is the Paymium project. And here's their ICO going on right now. And we all know blockchain.com as the wallet provider that's um, been around forever. So this domain name, blockchain.io, was registered back in 2012, according to this Coindesk article. Now, I'm a big fan of blockchain.com, right? The wallet and the company. I think they've done a lot for the Bitcoin and the crypto ecosystem. However, 
I've never really agreed with them trading under the brand name blockchain. I just don't think that's helpful at all, especially not to new users because then people like me have to explain the difference between blockchain technology and then this thing blockchain, the website and the wallet. I just don't think that's helpful at all. So the people, the new users will hear this word blockchain, this blockchain, that, Ethereum blockchain, Arc blockchain, Steam blockchain, EOS blockchain, and then they find this thing called blockchain, which is a wallet. I just, just don't think that's a good idea. It's not helpful. You know, that particular thing is not helpful to anybody. So that to me was a strategic decision that they chose to make, right? They knew, I believe they knew it would cause confusion, but they went ahead anyway because they knew the confusion would be to their benefit, right? Now, there's nothing technically illegal about that. It's just that if you're trying to help the ecosystem, don't do stuff like that, right? So they were sort of banking on their brand being confused with blockchain, the technology, so that that would gain trust from the term and all the hype around blockchain, the keyword, right? So slightly unethical to begin with. So now, having traded under such a generic term, it means ultimately they're now having to face the other side of that coin when someone else jumps on their back and attempts to ride the blockchain word. So if this company gets done, it will more likely be to do with the visual branding and how it looks similar to the branding of blockchain.com rather than the use of the word blockchain, which is so generic, no one could possibly take ownership of it, right? We can actually look at the two logos. I don't think they look that similar. Uh, Coindesk have done a jo good job of displaying them side by side here in a similar size. But look, I honestly do not think they look similar at all, really. They have a different logo type, which is the symbol. They have a completely different font. Blockchain.com is all uppercase. The blockchain.io one is all lowercase. The blockchain.io one has .io in the name. Blockchain does not, it just has the block capital letters. I just think it's sufficiently different that um, they, they can't be confused to be the same thing, right? But however, this is another court case, so it doesn't matter what I think, it's up for the courts to decide on what they think based on the rule of law. Another interesting point is that this, in France apparently, that blockchain.io name was also sort of trademarked legally like back in 2017. So legally, they're allowed to use that in France and it wasn't contested, apparently. So let me know what you think. How would you rule if you were the judge in this case? Do you think this is OK that blockchain.io owned the domain name for since 2012 and are now using it to host their ICO website? Is that OK? What do you think to blockchain.com using the name blockchain to brand their company, even though that's kind of a generic term that confuses people? Let me know what you think to all that down in the comments below. But that's all I've got for you today. So if you like this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. If you disliked it, you can hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below based on the things I just talked about. And if you're not already, get subscribed. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell so you get notifications when I release new videos. And if you want to follow me on the social networks, check out my website, cryptoversity.com. Click on podcast and all the social networks are listed there for you. Other than that, I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.